In this video, we'll be going over the second part of electrolysis, where if you have a mixture of cations in a solution, or even if it's molten, then uh, and a current is applied, you can predict which metal is going to plate out as a solid first. So, so you have like a. Well, let's let's take a look. Okay, so. If you have a mixture of cation metals, the one that takes the least work will plate out first. So the easiest one comes out first. And so what do I mean by easiest? So the one with the most positive E cell, or like, or you could say like the lowest negative E cell, um, and, and that means the most negative delta G uh, will plate out first. So the the situation, so say, say you have like a beaker and then you have all these ions. Well, actually, let's just look at this example right here. So you have a solution it's at 25 degrees Celsius, and things are one molar. So this information here is basically telling you you can check you can check the standard reduction potential table because the solution's at one molar, and um, and it's at standard temperature. Um, and we have a beaker with all these things. So you have like some mixture. So you have like cadmium ions. You have silver ions, gold ions, and nickel ions. And then you're applying a current to this. So which which ions are going to come out first? So we'll write half reactions and then compare this. And then we'll try to apply these bullet points. So CD2 plus, uh, plus two electrons makes solid CD. Um, the silver one electron makes solid silver uh, gold is going to require three electrons so write out your half reactions and then we'll look these up so uh, plus two electrons makes solid nickel um, there's actually so we actually have water present here and water can get reduced as well so H2O plus two electrons and uh, water, when it gets, uh, so when water gets reduced, um, it's actually the hydrogen that's getting reduced. So the hydrogen is a, is a plus one here, um, and it gets converted to hydrogen gas. So this has a, has a zero charge on it. So if you run electricity through water, um, you can get uh, hydrogen gas. So this is one of the ways to... Um, like those hydrogen fuel cell car or those hydrogen cars that run off a of hydrogen gas. So this is one of the ways to get to produce hydrogen is you need water and you add electricity. But then where does the electricity come from? This comes from burning fossil fuels. So that's kind of like a you kind of like a, a backwards way of and you're still like you're still, you know, burning things and releasing CO2 into the environment um, with those hydrogen cars. So so anyway, that makes uh, hydrogen gas and uh, some hydroxide ions. So let's go uh, look all these up on your reduction potential table. And, uh, and I have cadmium um, on number 42, so that one's here. Uh, I have silver way over here, so this happens really easily, so it's a, a, po a positive uh, 0 0.80 um, and gold this one's the easiest to reduce so that one's gonna happen first um, and uh, and then uh, next we have nickel nickel is right here um, and then water is right here so the first one to get reduced is gonna be gold uh, followed by silver uh, then nickel then cadmium and then water won't play a role because this one is the hardest one to reduce. So this one, so water is not going to get in the way of the metals being plated. Uh, so let's look at our example again. So this was number one. So let's go back. Uh, so this was number one was gold, then silver, then nickel, then cadmium. And this one was a negative 0.83. So you're going to have to, uh, it says, you know, which which metals played out as the voltage is gradually increased. 
so you wouldn't even get to this high of a voltage yet before water starts um, being reduced. All right, so try this question. I have a uh, example question for you to try. It says, in electrolysis of an aqueous solution of sodium sulfate, what reactions occur at the anode and what occurs at the cathode? So it's saying which one gets oxidized and which one gets reduced out of these four. Um, so one thing I wanted to point out here is before you go, so you might look at this one and go, hmm, well, if I flip this one and go like this, sodium being oxidized into this, that should happen real easy because that's a positive 0.27, and we know that this gets oxidized very easily. So you might think that that happens at the anode, but wait a second, let's look at your species here, and you have sodium cations this does not exist this is not present so this is not going to be possible so what you have so you, your species present is sodium ions uh, sulfate ions water is present you have an aqueous solution so water is present so you need to look at and see the reduction of water of uh, you need to look at the reduction of water and you need to test this. You need to test the oxidation of water and the reduction of water. Um, and then you have you also have sulfate ions are present. So you need to test the oxidation of sulfate by flipping the first one. Okay. So, but do not flip this one. I, I just wanted to point this out before um, I let you guys go and try this one. I wanted to point this one out. This is a common mistake. Is students will go, oh, if I flip this one, that one's going to happen at the anode because that'll be a positive point two, but this is not present. Okay, this problem has H2O, it has sodium ions, um, and it has sulfate ions.